Hi, welcome back to this next Alt C session. It's great to be here. My name is Emma Proctor Legg and I'm the chair for this session. I'm really pleased to be joined today by Marcella, David, Sarah, Debbie, and Kirsty. This session is eMora, a collaborative online assessment project in midwifery education. The session is 25 minutes in total with approximately 20 minutes for the presentation and five minutes for questions. Please do use the chat to post questions and comments. I will now hand you over to Kirsty. Right, hi everyone. Um, so, yep, we're talking today about something called eMora. Um, it's myself, Kirsty, and David, Marcella, Debbie, and Sarah, and they'll introduce themselves. So, if you ever wanted to get in touch with us, um, please feel free to or to follow us on Twitter. Um, this project's about uh, quite a large consortium of universities in round about the East Midlands, South Yorkshire kind of area. And if you move to the next slide, Sarah, I'll talk to you about what we were doing. So um, we all, we're all midwifery educators and ourselves here today are more on the learning technology side. So we've got a mixture of university learning technologists and pebble pad as well. And we were working with academics from various universities to um, take a very, a very large sort of practice document that the midwives would go out into practice and get all of their competency signed off and putting it into paper. Now the Mora Consortium, they actually wrote this document um, as per the professional standards and it was it's a standard document that's about 250 pages. So all the universities who wanted to uh, want wanted to use digital for reasons you know less paper, its data is more secure and all that kind of thing. Um, so we really had the challenge of um, taking this enormous document and putting it online basically for the students in line with um, university regulations, the professional regulations, and as something that can be used by practice assessors out in the field, out in hospitals and community settings. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that, but also about um, you know, how, how our way of working was impacted by COVID and how that um, changed the practice that we were doing. So. I'm going to send it over to Sarah now, and we're going to have a look at uh, a quick activity on Mentimeter. Thanks very much, Kirsty. So indeed, so our first activity is called Making It Fail. Um, an interesting take on how you think about these larger collaborative projects might work in reality. So if you could find your way to menti.com, and I believe the URL is going to be in the chat, uh, and enter the code when you get there, 6348. 0258 and we've got four options for you and I'm just going to come out of the screen uh, in a moment to make sure everyone's got in the code again is 63480258 and we're going to go to the poll and let's have a look and see what's happening so that's very interesting already people have got a very strong sense that it's actually the collaboration between the multiple universities that's going to be um, the most likely barrier to success. Uh, I'll just wait to see if there are any more options coming in. No one's gone for anything else yet. That, that's really interesting. Um, yep. Yeah, so anyone who's worked with the Nursing and Midwifery Council or other type professional bodies might have a stronger view about uh, how they might uh, perhaps become a barrier to actual learning. Um, okay, we've got a small vote for the pandemic. Uh, I think Possibly that might be enough time for everyone to have got into Mentimeter. Don't worry if you haven't been able to get into it because we've got another activity for you to work on next. Uh, so we're actually going to go back to the slides with this clear view that a lot of people think it's the people and the communication that will be the biggest factor. Um, and if I just move on to the next slide, uh, we're going to actually take this conversation further into Padlet now. And... Um, we're going to ask you to go to this Padlet, again, QR code or link on the screen, uh, so that you can put in specifics that you think might contribute to these four different areas. So given what you've said, that you think it's the cross-university collaboration and communication that might be the biggest factor for failure, um, perhaps that's going to be the most expanded comment here. So just hoping you can find your way before I move away from this slide, because we've got the QR code on here and the link again should be in the chat. Um, no one's saying anything, so I'm assuming that we're good to go over to the Padlet. 
and we'll have a look at this one here. So let's just spend a moment um, just thinking about what you think might be too much of a challenge to overcome in terms of working together with multiple institutions. And I don't know if you noticed the eagle-eyed ones amongst you, but there were nine uh, universities that were part of this collaboration. Um, there were others that started off thinking about getting involved, and there are also others that have come on board after the core group have done all the work, <laughs> which is really nice because they get to benefit from it. Um, but the majority of the effort and participation that came from our group of collaborators was from nine universities and um, mainly three of us from PebblePad as well, who were very committed to the project. Uh, okay, so we've got some nice information coming up here. Um, I'll just pick out a couple, but these are going to be picked up um, by my colleagues from the other universities uh, as part of their discussion. So, okay, university didn't invest in the systems required underneath the university regulations, and it might be too long and cumbersome to achieve. Um, thinking about that professional body regulations, too prescriptive, absolutely, that can always be a barrier uh, to actual engagement. Um, if I just look on the far right of the pandemic, we've got some difficulty with working remotely with different partners, unable to meet together. That's a very interesting um, observation. And uh, then coming back to this sort of cross university and collaboration, um, lack of agreement, lack of staff resource, people don't share. That's so interesting. And then working across different technology and platforms, etc. So I'm going to leave it at that point, and I'm going to just hop back to the uh, PowerPoint here, um, and I'm going to hand over to my colleague David from Sheffield Hallam, who's going to break down some of these factors. Uh, thank you, Sarah. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting seeing seeing what your thoughts were there, because uh, they're all... Uh, the, we had very similar thoughts as we were going in uh, as well individually as institutions. So uh, the key factors uh, and what we did really was so we had um, the pandemic. So uh, as everyone's been working over the last 18 months uh, with that over them, um, but the pandemic meant that we had to move online and not just um, our group, but, you know, our whole institutions were moving online. We were having to make uh, adjustments uh, and obviously from a technical perspective doing the support and the training for that um, but also then having to move online as a group uh, so we were learning individually as well as uh, as whole uh, as a group and then of course there's the moving something from paper to digital um, that obviously you know you've got the platforms and which is the best uh, to go with some of the institutions already had pebble pad and uh, those that didn't uh, were happy to get on board because uh, it met our needs perfectly so um so moving on to the next set of factors that we looked at that, that moving from paper uh, to digital one of the key things was how it needs to work also with the professional body requirements. And just to, to speak for a moment on, on those, I'm gonna hand over to Debbie, who's our expert on that. Okay, um, so my, my role in this project was purely as a facilitator, um, uh, supported by Sarah Copeland and Kelly Shaw from PebblePad. Um, but I did have a subject specific knowledge in relation to uh, midwifery. So I was a midwifery teacher and um, worked as a midwife. And this was really quite helpful in, in working with the project. I must say the project manager turned out to be Martella, who's going to speak shortly, um, and a very good job she did of that. Um, but midwifery education, as you probably all well know, is, is bound up by professional requirements um, governed by the Nursing and Midwifery Council. It's very strict and very rigid, and that was really picked up in the um, the Padlet. Uh, it, it did provide some challenges, but it was critical that we produce safe practitioners from uh, from assessment in practice. Um, so we had to make sure that uh, these requirements were transparent, um, user friendly as far as we could, because there was a prescriptive element to it and that they were adhered to and we were able to report on those um, to aid the academics in making sure these people were fit to be part of a midwifery register. Thanks, David. <laughs> Fab. So finally, uh, one of the final facts that we looked at was obviously the uh, the the requirements of the different participating universities because we all have different requirements and those can uh, come down to you know some some institutions we're needing to 
to uh, to do grading as part of the assessment, so that had to be represented. There's then um, the fact that it's placement based. So depending on the placement patterns of the different institutions, how would we represent that in one electronic document? And the recording of hours, and again, how our how our institutions like to record the hours that students have done. It's a very key part of the qualification. So we had all of those factors that we had to jiggle and work together. So I'm now going to look at a diagram um, that we felt best encapsulated um, the way that we worked together or the way that we came together. So right in the middle, um, you've got the the email or you know our group, and then you've got the basically where this all begins which is with the, the the midwifery team and the academics within these institutions they've got these set of regulations that they've got to work towards but you know their their expertise is in those regulations and midwifery and teaching they've been used to doing it paper-based so they came to uh, us like myself a learning technologist within the institution who understood the technology that could then give them their options and what they could do with. So within the institution, I, we worked very closely, the learning technologists with the academic and together came and represented at the meeting. So like I say, you had that overlap. So within the institution, there was the technical expertise needed and also the midwifery expertise needed. Now with so many institutions, and I know this came up in the in the problems that you, you could see beforehand, um, all the institutions and all the different voices and ideas and everybody wanting it to be the best for their institution. Well, the third cog in this wheel that was perfect was the Pebblepad team. Um, they chaired they chaired the meeting, they brought their expertise, both midwifery expertise as well as the technical expertise. And with them chairing it, it was able to pull it all together, uh, keep everybody focused on, and on track. Now, I'm going to hand over to Marcella, who has been pivotal as well in, in taking this project forward by sitting with a key person, uh, a lot of the paperwork and, and bits and pieces and organisation of it. So, Marcella. Um, thank you, David. The, this was the hidden and unseen work in the background that kept the project together and, to, and, and on track to complete. Um, there was no expert or detailed project management, but there was the use of the non-tools to agile in project management. All members were volunteers, so there was no obligation, but just a genuine wish to help and cooperate and learn from each other. The resources were plenty in terms of knowledge, so it was a matter of allowing all this knowledge to be shown. Next slide, please. This part is going to show a few of the things that we did during the project to make it successful. So first, we discussed the goals and we set out with common ground. Um, those were the factors that were discussed by uh, David earlier. For example, the time frame. The e-portfolio needed to be completed before the following academic year, September 2021, they were coming up now. The participants and roles that uh, were played and the outcomes to be expected. So we started with a common ground. Next slide, please. We set out our priorities in the first, first few discussions. And uh, we knew that the resulting product had to be tested to exhaustion. So there will be little issues once completed. The e-portfolio needed to be uh, flexible and respond to the requirements and the features will be agreed by the team democratically. So next slide. Um, we met weekly online as a group and we divide the project into tasks. The meetings, the weekly meetings were recorded in case something was missed and there was a um, need to go back and check what was agreed. But we did not do minutes per, per meeting. Instead, we used something uh, that we call the map mapping and working document. And that kept tra uh, track of our progress and the decisions agreed. Um, the progress was tracked per meeting. So initially, um, there was a document per week, then a document per fortnight, and then a document per month. We finished with several versions of this document, but the last version reflects the, the final developed document that was agreed. Um, this is a sem sample in, in the image of the uh, development document, and it's about the table of contents. Um, it has three parts, the original PDF with some bullet points of our agreements and how we interpret those um, uh, questions, and also the pebble pipe view, how we uh, come to uh, 
show that. And a final column, there is a progress column, but it says agree in there, but uh, the previous versions will have more notes in there. This obviously is just the final version. Next slide, please. Um, to do the agreed work, we selected three developers, and we also did task satellite tasks that were added to the build later on. So we completed the easy tasks first, and we got used to and comfortable with working together. And then we did the complex tasks, the complex ones later at the end. Some solutions became sort of a model that we replicated in different sections. So effectively, we standardized solutions to use in different parts of the of the portfolio. Next slide, please. We use some known solutions, but we also try new ones. So there were no wrong questions, no fears. We ask him what happens if we do this, and we tested and um, and we did a lot of testing. Some solutions cover all the requirements. Some other solutions um, were a choice of the least bad option. <laughs> Uh, we spend most of our time discussing and trying to fix and trying to um, come with better solutions. Um, so we spend a lot of our time on the imperfect solutions. Um, they ask the work, the e portfolio is going to end up with 400 assets at the end when a student has completed an academic year, but we haven't seen that yet. Next slide, please. We did, however, have the great luck and privilege to have an early version of the EMORA trial by the University of Sheffield Holland with their spring cohort. The students and the staff and their practice partners gave us some really good feedback that helped us improve the e-portfolio development. We were able to do individual tests with the support from Kelly, a technician from Pebble Pad, and our hosts here, Debbie. Um, uh, we tested student parts, tutors features, external assessors, accessibility, how easy it is to use. We did tests on the different platforms and Pebble Plus and Pebble Pocket and Atlas. Next slide, please. But the real test uh, will be the completion of the academic program in all three univers in all the participant universities. But that won't happen until at least the summer of 2023. <laughs> By then, perhaps we're going to be working in the next EMORA. I want to mention um, that the creation of the help site section that is a collaboratively updated by all the participant universities is a testimony to the willingness to help and cooperate by this group. Uh, this site will be permanently available online to all the users of eMora, regardless of university. And just as a summary, uh, just to say that we started the project in July 2020, we trialed a first version in January 21, and we officially completed it in July 2021. And now I am going to hand over back to Christine. Okay, I just wanted to summarise a little bit. Um, obviously, it's interesting to read the comments on the Padlet about the kind of challenges we had. Um, but we had a lot of surprise outcomes, really, and it, it might not be things that you're necessarily surprised um, to see, but things that we initially thought were going to be difficult. Actually, the solutions, if you like, uh, were a better way of working. So with Zoom and Teams, um, we were able to work very uh, in a very agile way, as you know, as we all know. And we got to see um, each other's pets, which is always quite nice. And I think the thing was having the ad, ad hoc meetings was was nice too. So we had little subgroups working on things and we could just have, um, you know, very agile. Let's just meet up for a few minutes now. You know, we mostly use Zoom, I think, to be honest, because we didn't necessarily have all of the same platforms. Um, but but it was very it was very beneficial. So, for example, if I think I remember I was working with my colleague, Sean, and Marcella on some of the um, testing. So we, we got together, did a quick testing um, documents, and then, you know, we could easily meet perhaps the next day with the wider team. All, all the meetings we could record in that way. There were people who couldn't come and, and they did actually use those recordings. And then as Marcella was talking about, we've actually got a record then of why we made decisions and why certain things are a certain way. So in a few years, if, if we get new staff coming to the universities, um, and say, you know, what, what have you done it this way for? We've got a clear sort of reasoning there. Um, and I think one of the, the biggest things was um, the cost of the project. Um, you know, as you know, travel costs a lot of time to travel, um, refreshments, all that kind of thing. If we'd have all had to go and maybe converge on Pebble Pad or wherever, then there, there is a cost involved. And I, I don't know that that's something um, that's really been factored in, I think, for this type of project for our, for our own institutions. 
Um, and also, just to mention, during particularly during the first lockdown, um, as couldn't travel, and so, you know, some people are locked down in on their own, um, and people looked forward to the meetings, and you know, had had a sort of nice, it had a nice atmosphere about it. It's quite chatty. Um, and the other thing um, is that if we had a colleague who we wanted to come to the meeting just for a few minutes, it was quite easy to patch them in. I think Kelly, who's been mentioned a few times, was quite often as the sort of fount of technical pebble pad knowledge would be would be patched in for a few minutes to talk about something. But she didn't have to kind of take time out of her day uh, to get on the train or get in the car and go and go and see us. Um, so overall, um, it worked probably better this way than if we'd have done it in a traditional sort of way, very task focused. Okay, and um, that's, that's our view for the last year. <laughs> We're not responsible for their reunion though, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> And just a, rem a reminder of who who we are and who's involved in the wider project. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. That's really interesting um, presentation. Uh, really fascinating to hear about the project and the scale of it. Um, there aren't any currently any questions in the comments, so I'm just going to um, ask a couple of questions if that's okay with you. So I'm, I'm really interested to know sort of the, the absolute scale of what you're. Um, involved in so how many students were um, in the trials and then how many is it, it going to roll out to um, as it goes live? Oh, I can answer for the trials. Uh, there was about ninety students, um, which, as far as the students were concerned, it was not a trial. But they, 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 they have had a good experience. We've just, we've just gone through the assessment period um with them testing the final sort of stages of the of the documentation and so far the feedback's been really strong so so mm. it's uh so far been successful i think we'll have about 150 starting to use it yeah and that's, and that's just one university so if we mm. multiply that across the the spectrum um it's going to be quite a few yeah um, and then over the three-year program as well yeah yeah, and the good thing is for the people out in the practice, so the practice assessors who are midwives doing a busy job, they'll have to just get used to one way of doing it then. It, it will be a common way of doing it for them, hopefully. Yeah, and hopefully um, it will be an easier transition after the last sort of year and a half that we've had. Um, there is a question that's come in here from uh, Lisa Gray. She says, great presentation, thank you. I'd be interested in your thoughts on what you feel have been the overall benefits to date in terms of this approach to assessment redesign for students and staff. Who's going to start with that? Either. Yeah. <laughs> David probably is the best support I can, call I, to go for this I can, one. Yeah, I can say, obviously, um, but when it comes to the, sort of the assessment design, the benefit of the fact that we we came together as the institution so um I'm, I'm from sheffield hallam and uh derby is quite close to us and the fact that we collaborated in putting this electronic documentation together helped because again when it comes to placements with the different uh healthcare trusts there's a lot of overlap so those that we're that are learning how to use this electronic documentation out in the placements um when they learn one they're learning everybody's so it was mutually beneficial and again with the way that students might transfer or move areas and things like that the paperwork that goes with them the electronic documentation is the same and, and continuous so that that that's been really beneficial for from a, an assessment design perspective of the fact that we've collaboratively worked together because mm -hmm. otherwise people might be familiar with the uh with the software perhaps they may have seen pebble pad things before but then the way it's been put together might be completely different so so this cohesive approach and the time benefits i mean uh we've not been able to demonstrate it or anything but but our support guides are amazing you know when, when you work in a technical field and you're putting together support guides it takes a huge amount of time to put you know eye to needle everything that that a student might need or want as far as support but when there's nine institutions working on the same set of guides it you know it's it took it took us a ninth of the time to produce much better quality support resources so things like that have been huge gains 
I think just to add to that as well, talking to midwifery academics, um, it's they're loyal to their profession. And we are, you know, in a sense, I suppose we're quite close, kind of competing institutions, but the midwifery uh, academics and our team and the collaboration uh, is working for the good of the sector. They want to get good midwives out in practice who are trained because that's that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. So I think that ethos of maybe a healthcare ethos came through um, this project quite nicely. Thank you. I think that's a really great place just to um, end because we, we're basically out of time now. But thank you again for presenting. It was really fascinating to watch. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>